Greetings, this is DT with Interactive Homeschooling, and today I wanted to do a quick video on a math curriculum that um, is one of our favorite math curriculums to use. Um, give a little insight in, into why we've chosen this particular math curriculum, and also to um, tell about our sixth grade math program for this year. So, one of the math curriculums that we choose to use is called the Key 2 series. And I should say that we've tried several others. We've used Saxon Math in the past. I've used Becca Math in the past. I have also used Horizons Math and Switched On Schoolhouse. Um, some of them I have absolutely, we've absolutely hated. Um, and some I loved, you know, I loved Saxon Math and I loved Horizons Math. However, my children did not really take to that spiral approach to curriculum in the beginning. So we decided to take, and what we found is that they did better with a mastery approach to learning. And so we used the mastery approach to pretty much everything. And um, using our block schedule, the mastery approach helps with that and fits right into our, our way of learning. So let me give you a overview of the Key 2 series. The Key 2 series is a collection of books and they cover certain topics. They range from fractions, and this is the, just showing the teachers or the test guide. This is the fractions um, book and there are four books in this set that your child would complete. And it starts with basic skills on fractions. So book one is on fraction concepts. Book two is on multiplying and dividing fractions. Book three is on adding and subtracting fractions. And book four is mixed numbers. Um, so now with these books, they always go back and they review. They start with the most very basic of concepts dealing with fractions, um, and then they build up to the most complex with those. Um, after that, and you can do these in any order that you choose, um, but after fractions, you have the decimals set. This one also has four books. Book one is with decimal concepts. Book two is adding, subtracting, and multiplying decimals. Book three is dividing decimals, and book four is using decimals. They all come with a test book as well, so in a diagnostic test. So you, and I've done this with my children, giving them the diagnostic test in the beginning, and if they test out of a book, you know, book one, then you give them the diagnostic test for book two. If they test out of that, then you give them the book three diagnostic test. So wherever your child fits, you can start with that book. Um, on the diagnostic test. But if not, you can just start at the beginning and let, um, that I did that with a few of my younger ones and let them kind of run through them and they enjoyed it, so it's not a problem. All right, another book in this, the Key 2 series or sets of books is on percentages. This one has three books and comes with the reproducible test as well. Um, the first book is on the concepts of percents. Book two is on percents and fractions, and book three is on percents and decimals. Then we have, I actually want this one. Okay, you have key two measurements, and there are two different sets. You have the key two measurements for English measures. Um, book one is on English units of length. Book two is on measuring length and perimeter using English units. Book three is on finding area and volume. Book four is on weight, capacity, temperature, and time. This is the metric measurement set. Um, book one is on metric units of length. Book two is metric units of length and perimeter. Book three is on metric units of volume, and book four is on metric units of mass, capacity, temperature, and time. You then move into the, you have the algebra, key to algebra. This one has 10 books, and it's actually pretty good as a, a um, pre-algebra set. Um, so this one, the book one is going to deal with operations and integers. Book two is on variables, terms, and expressions. Book three is on equations. Book four, polynomials. 
book five, rational numbers. Book six is multiplying and dividing rational numbers. Book seven is on adding and subtracting rational numbers. Book eight is on graphs. Book nine is on systems, equa systems of equations. And book 10 is on square roots and quadratic equations. And then the last set in the key two series is the geometry set. This one has eight booklets that your child would complete. Book one is on lines and segments. Book two is on circles. Book three is on constructions. Book four is on perpendiculars. Book five is squares and rectangles. Book six, angles. Book seven is perpendiculars, parallels, chords, tangents, and circles. And book eight is on triangles, parallel lines, and similar polygons. Okay. Now, I wanted to go over those. We choose to use that one again because it is mastery-based, meaning that instead of my children jumping from touching on from one year to the next, your child would learn if you're doing measurements like we're doing this year. So they may learn how to use non-standard units one year. So they would use their hands and feet or pieces of tape or paper clips and pencils to measure different objects. The next year, they may go into using rulers or me um, and learning how to measure things to the nearest inch. Um, and then the following year, they may learn to measure things to the nearest inch and half inch and quarter inch or an eighth inch and, and so forth. Um, so instead of building year by year on a topic, the mastery approach allows my children to really stay on a topic until they truly understand it. And so we do not move on from that topic until they have mastered that concept. Um, some of them are going to master those concepts and move on faster than others. And using this approach lets me see that. I can truly say what they, what they know as far as um, math or any of the other units that we've covered because we use that approach. And I can tell you what they don't know. Um, I was apprehensive in the beginning because I felt like, well, maybe we're going to miss some things or they're going to not have practice on things. But I found that it was very easy for me to implement activities to kind of allow them to reinforce concepts that they had previously done. So we're going to do that this year. Um, so a little bit about how we're setting up this year. Um, the girls are going to I have two, one that is actually a sixth grader and one that is a fifth grader. However, all of her work, she's always um, been a great level ahead and could probably be a little bit further, but we're going to um, let her see what she does this year. Um, they are very different learners. Um, the older child actually is a struggling learner. Um, she is the child that would easily slip through the cracks in, in a school um, and if you're not paying attention because she just kind of coasts by um, and she has difficulty grasping a concept. She does require the repetition so this works for her a lot better than giving her a concept moving to something else because she's going to forget it. Um, so this year the setup is we have our block schedules. We have 10 blocks and um, the first three weeks we actually started um, in June. So we did reviews of concepts. We reviewed fractions and decimals. Um, and then we started with English units of length. And then we're going to go through both of the measurement sets, the English units of measurements and also the metric system of measurements this year. Um, we'll get into, we'll do those through box two through six. And then our seventh block is going to be on percentages. Our eighth block would be on going into exponents and calculating um, time and, and rate of speed and things of that nature. Our ninth unit is going to be on graphing, and that'll be on using and interpreting graphs, as well as coordinate graphing and also a little bit of probability and statistics. And our 10th unit is going to be a review of the concepts. My goal for their this year, being their sixth grade year, is to have them understand, have a full understanding of all of their basic arithmetic and concepts so that before they bridge over into pre-algebra for seventh grade, that they will have a firm understanding of everything that they will need so that they're not reviewing these concepts heavily or having to do too many manipulating too many calculations in their head just to be able to work out their pre-algebra problems. So that's our goal this year. Um, 
to give you a little peek into how the books are arranged or what they look like inside. This is the book one, is what the books look like. Um, all of the, some of them have their varying degrees or page numbers, but most of them average about 45 pages. Some of them are about 36 pages per book. And again, the, these books, the reason I like them is because they are basically self-study books. Um, the kids write in them, write into the book. They are teaching books from the beginning, the concepts, um, and the kids can move as quickly as possible or as slowly as they need to as well. So it's going to start at the most basic. So in the book, in the beginning of the book, they're doing the same thing. They're using non-standard units of measurement. Um, for the metric system, and they do the same thing for the English system. And then it's going to move into the more, the terminology and the, the units that they use in the metric system, starting in book one. It's black and white, so it's not too busy. Um, some of mine would get too distracted with a lot of the colors, and then some others like the colors. But this one is not too busy, and it does offer the visual, um, to it appeals to that visual learner. And my children do need that type of visual hands-on. Um, so this, this particular book does work for those types of learners. Um, it has the things that you need, has the rulers right in, on the pages. The pages are not too lengthy or heavy. So again, it makes it easier to get through the class day. And my children actually ask for math and they actually ask for the key to math set. They, they love these. Um, so the other things that I'm doing to help, two things that I needed to keep in mind was helping them to not forget concepts that we had done prior or covered prior, and then two, to bring in the hands-on component to the learning. Um, the hands-on component first is very easy because um, with the unit approach, you can just grab all the materials and I'm pre-assembling our math units the same way I'm doing our science units. So while they're working in the beginning, they're working on units of length. So they have everything that they need to cover. They have their rulers, they have um, compasses because we will actually um, be bridging in concepts of geometry. So they will be measuring some of the different shapes that we have, shape sets that we have, and some of our 3D shapes that we have. We'll be using those to measure the size and things. Um, for the capacity unit, I've had this unit set by Learning Resources. And these are really cool. You just put different colors of dyed water in them and they can use these. And if you notice, it has all the markings. So the kids can actually study how the conversions of um, capacity. So we've had this set for a long time and it's it, we used it before, they've used it before, so this would be a good review for them. And again, it just gives them the hands-on piece to learning to convert those units of measurement. Um, other things that we'll be using, they'll have a digital scale, a scale that converts the units from them so they can use this for English measurements of weight and also they can use it for the um, metric system units of, of weight. So they'll have that available to them. Um, things that I typically keep, we have our shelves and my kids are really good about Montessori type learning. So these are little sets that I have already pre-printed, laminated. I found these little containers at Family Dollar and I've separated them into sets. So this is where one of the sets for perimeter and this is for perimeter of a regular polygon. And what I like about these is that this is a self-study type work that they can do. They can add to their notebooks if they want or just practice on paper in the evenings. So it gives them different shapes. You can see it and it has different measurements and they are to calculate the perimeter. Little basic easy things they'll do. This will be a review for them. 
um, and then it has the answer key so that they can just quickly check themselves. They don't need me to do this with them. Um, I will check it, you know, check behind them, but they can check themselves um, for their understanding of the concept and they can do this independently in the evenings as a review um, and they or they could do it um, as a, it could be used as like a station activity where you have math stations and things of that nature. I keep these, I'm gonna have this in one box for all of our measurement activities and they'll be able to go to these. I have different sets. So this is on measuring circumference. This one, um, there's some on time, measuring elapsed time. We have a little way station on balancing um, weights. And this one's a nice one. It comes with, it's called Way and Play. We've had this one for a while as well. And it's very basic. It has little cards for them to go through, um, balancing out weights. And it tells them how much each one of the shapes weighs um, and the weights that are inside. So they'll be using this as well. It's just a little fun station. Um, they will, we have, one other that's something that I've used, and this will help them to also remember or recall some of the things they've learned in geometry. And this is the power solids set. So we'll be using this for measuring um, the size of the um, three dimensional shapes. And also they'll be using this for capacity, volume of, of the three dimensional shapes. So even though it's a measurement, they'll be using it to do measurements. It will also help them to recall the names of the different shapes and some of the formulas for the shapes. They'll be learning those. Um, it comes with a book that you have to buy separately. And this is a great book called um, Power, Investigating Power Solids. Lots of absolutely wonderful activities um, for power solids. So again, I know that this is more geometry. However, again, with the measuring, I'm going to use this so we can make sure that they keep up with the um, their, their different shapes and things as well. Um, I will, as we go along, post um, more of the activities, um, pictures or videos of how they've completed the activities on our blog. I will post the schedule the box schedule will have that listed on the blog as well. Um, so hopefully this was helpful and I'm going to finish putting this in the box and put it away so we'll be ready to start with this next week. Thanks. Have a great day.